loss of stock. Let us now consider loss of stock. What happens in consignment accounts if goods are lost? Loss to is considered in uh, maybe of two types, maybe abnormal loss or maybe normal loss. So let us first discuss abnormal loss. What is abnormal loss? Abnormal loss is a loss which has taken place due to some abnormal conditions like maybe fire, maybe there's a flood, maybe there's theft, fraud, etc. etc. It is not normal, it is not usual and may occur because of some unexpected event. <clears throat> so now suppose goods have been lost. Let's say in transit they are lost. Maybe there is a theft and some part of the stock is lost. In that case, what do we do with the goods lost? What is the accounting treatment for the goods which are lost? Abnormal loss is valued. We value the amount of loss. We put a value to the loss that has been made and then accounting entries are passed so that the effect of abnormal loss is removed from the consignment account. This is so as to arrive at the correct profit on consignment. The profit which we would have arrived at had all things be normal. Abnormal loss is then transferred to profit and loss account. So what is the valuation of this abnormal stock? Value of abnormal loss. First, we take the purchase cost of the goods lost. Say for example, in our original example, where Mukta was sending 100 cartons of clothes to Kanta of Kanpur. Mukta also incurred, what was the cost? It was 1000 rupees per carton. And let us say, 10 units are lost in transit due to some theft, due to some abnormal condition. So what was the cost of these goods lost? This was actually at the rate of rupees 1000 per carton. Assuming 10 cartons are lost, the purchase cost would be 1000 into 10. Next, we consider the consigner expenses. That is the cost of sending the goods by the consigner to the consignee. If I remember correctly, Mukta incurred 10,000 rupees cost, transportation cost of sending these 100 cartons of garments. If that be the case, what is the cost per carton? 10,000 divided by 100 bags, you have a cost of rupees 100 per bag. So this becomes this cost, this cost of transport is also added to the abnormal cost. Next, you have proportion of direct expenses of consignee, if any. <clears throat> In our example, while the consignee did incur direct cost, there was transport cost, cost of carrying the goods from the point of arrival, from the railway station to the warehouse of the consignee. The goods were lost, the 10 cartons were lost even before these costs were incurred. But had the loss occurred sometime later, that proportion of expenses of consignee would also be included in valuing of the abnormal loss. <clears throat> so in this example, if we take, you had 1000 per carton into 10 cartons and 100 into 10, the abnormal loss in this particular instance would be valued at 10,000 plus 1,000, 11,000 would be the value of abnormal loss if 10 bags, 10 cartons were lost in transit while moving from the consigner's place to the consignee. However, if it so happens that the goods reach the consignee's 
warehouse and thereafter some goods are lost, then what would be the value of those goods? Then each carton which is lost would be valued at a cost of 1000 which is the purchase cost, proportion of the consigner expense which is 100 and also the proportion of direct expenses of the consignee that is the cost the consignee incurred in transporting the goods from the station to the warehouse. That was 5000. Let us say if all the 100 bags were there and 5000 was incurred, the cost was 50 per carton. So we have a total cost of 1150 per carton of abnormal loss, if any. So, abnormal loss is actually valued in the same manner as consignment stock is. What is added? The purchase cost, the proportion of the consigner's expenses and the proportion of the direct expenses incurred by the consignee. Of course, it would depend on where the goods are lost, at what stage the goods are lost. If expenses are incurred after the loss, then obviously these are not added when we value abnormal loss. So goods may be lost in transit, goods may be lost in the consignee warehouse, the cost could be different. Here, in the first case, in our example, the cost was 1100 if suppose 1100 per carton if the goods were lost in transit when they were transported from the consigner to the consignee. However, if the goods were lost later in the warehouse of the consignee after reaching the warehouse of the consignee, if there is an abnormal loss, those same goods would be valued at 1150. Therefore, abnormal loss is a loss which occurs due to some abnormal condition. It is valued in a similar, value needs to be put to it and it's valued in a similar manner as closing stock. It is valued so that the effect of the abnormal loss can be removed from the consignment account. As we said before, it is valued just like consignment stock. So the purchase cost the proportion of the consignor's expense and the proportion of the direct expenses of the consignee are added in order to value, are included in order to value abnormal loss. However, it would depend on when the goods are lost, whether the goods are lost in transit or the goods are lost in the consignee warehouse. Let us see once we value the abnormal loss, what is the accounting treatment of abnormal loss? So the idea is to remove the effect of abnormal loss from consignment account. So we say abnormal loss account debit and credit the consignment account. Just like we value closing stock, what is the entry we pass for closing stock? We say consignment stock account debit to trading account. Similarly, when there is an abnormal loss, we say abnormal loss account, we create a new account called abnormal loss account and credit the consignment account so that the effect of the loss is removed from the consignment account and the consignment account will show us the normal profit. It may happen that the goods are insured and insurance claim is received. If that be the case, in that case, insurance claim or insurance company account is debited and abnormal loss is credited. Let us say there is a total loss of 10,000. However, there is an insurance claim or the insurance company agrees to pay up 7,000 rupees. So the net loss that is suffered is only 3,000. What would be the accounting entries? Abnormal loss to consignment, the entire amount of abnormal loss, full 10,000. For the insurance claim, insurance claim account debit or insurance company account debit to abnormal loss with the amount of claim admitted, that is 7,000. Now there is a difference, a balance of 3,000 in the consignment in the abnormal loss account. This is transferred to profit and loss account and the abnormal loss account is closed.
This is how abnormal loss would be dealt with while we prepare consignment account in the books of the consignor.